Hello, my name is Nick Evergell. I'm a senior consultant with Spivey Consulting Group, and this is the Spivey Consulting Group YouTube channel. So welcome. Prior to my time with Spivey, I was the Director of Enrollment at Yale Law School for two years, and prior to that, I was the Associate Director of Admissions at Columbia Law School. Today, I would like to talk about the application review process at both of those schools, since I know a lot of you have questions about that. I'll start with Columbia. At Columbia, after a file is deemed complete, it is submitted to, the, uh, to one of the admissions officers to read. They read it and they make a decision on, on it. Uh, typically, they'll decide either it's an admit, it's a wait list, or a reject. Once that, once that admissions officer has made that decision, it then gets sent to a second admissions officer who votes on it and does the same thing and, and decides admit, reject, or wait list. If the two votes agree, that's the decision, unless it's an accept. If it's an accept, it has to go through the Dean of Admissions. She has to approve every admission that, that Columbia produces. Sometimes the Dean of Admissions is one of those two readers, so that's really easy. But sometimes it will require a third reader for her to decide. In any other case, a wait list or a reject, if the two readers agree, then that's the decision. If the two readers don't agree, then it goes to a third reader who will make their decision, and depending on that, that's the final decision on the file. So then once that happens, the decisions are sent out. The acceptances are usually sent out in the middle of January, the first rounds. Um, unless you applied early, those usually come out in December. Um, the rest of the acceptances start in January with a big wave in January and then sort of trickle out for the rest of the cycle. Uh, wait lists um, and rejects tend to happen a little bit further on in, this, on in the cycle as well. So that's Columbia. Yale is different. It's very different. It's got its own unique system. Because it's really important at Yale, they want the faculty to be as involved as possible in the process. So what happens is, once a file is complete, it gets read by the Dean of Admissions. Every file gets read by the Dean of Admissions. And she'll make one of three decisions. She will either uh, decide it's an automatic admit. Um, it's a very small percentage of the applicants, probably less than 1%. And if she decides that, there's actually a faculty um, chair of the admissions committee who gets a final say on that too. So she has to send all those to the faculty chair of the admissions committee at Yale. But usually that's a rubber stamp. It's, it, it typically is an issue. It's a very small group of people. We're talking Rhodes Scholars, things like that, um, are, are admitted that way. Then another 25% of the application pool gets sent to faculty review. The rest, by the way, are rejected pretty much straight off the bat. So then you have this 25% who are sent to faculty review. The way that works is each of those files gets assigned to three professors to read. And they're put together in a little batch of maybe 30 files or so, and they're given to one professor who has them for a week, and he votes on them. He decides to give them either a four, a three, or a two. Four being the highest, three being the middle, two being the lowest. Then, after he's reviewed, he or she has reviewed all of those files and gets sent to another professor who does not know what the previous professor voted, and he or she makes her decisions. Then it gets sent to a third file. Once everybody's voted, it comes back to the admissions office, and this is what I used to do, was I had to tally those votes. So I had to do a lot of math to 12, because if you had three professors each vote four, that person was given a 12. Sometimes they'd be given 11, 10, 9, 8, all the way down to 6. 12s and 11s were automatically admitted, there's no question. 10s, 8s, 9s um, would sort of be put aside for a while and would be decided on later on in the process. 6s and 7s were almost always rejected, unless the admissions office had a, had a particularly strong reason to, to admit one that maybe you know, the, the uh, faculty didn't understand. So that's how that works. So then those files will go out, they're, they're admitted, they get their decisions. And then what's interesting about Yale, though, and this is why Yale isn't, it's not an advantage to submit your application early as it is with other schools. The way it works at Yale is that typically by the end of all that, you still haven't filled the class, probably not even close. One of the things that's really interesting about Yale is that you don't have a lot of people coming back, you know, four, four, four. You know, there are, the, because each professor has their own sort of ideas of what makes a good student, um, oftentimes I saw lots of files come back that were ranked a four, three, two. Somebody loved them, somebody didn't like them so much. 
And so it's, it's a really sort of interesting piece of it where I always say that one of the ways you get into Yale is luck because if you happen to get professors who, who like you, who you luck out and get those professors to read your file, then you're that much more of a, a chance of being admitted. But the professors really are all over the place in terms of you know, what they think a strong application is. So anyway, so then at the end of the, you know, towards the end of the cycle, we're talking March, maybe even early April, you know, the admissions office, office comes back in and they see, okay, these are the number of 11s and 12s, we haven't filled the class yet, let's go back to those 10s, 8s, 10s, 9s, and 8s, and see who we can admit from there to fill the class. So then the admissions office is sort of back in it, deciding, you know, who should be admitted. Um, some of those are admitted, some of those are, are rejected, some of those are waitlisted. Um, so that's the story on the admissions process at Yale and Columbia. Uh, if you're interested in any more of our topics, we have a lot more of these coming up with various topics from admissions officers at Penn, Harvard, um, Vanderbilt, and schools like that. If you're interested in more law school application advice, please look us up on spivyconsulting.com uh, and feel free to reach out. We have so many well-qualified consultants who are only too willing to help. And please don't forget to like, comment, or subscribe to our YouTube channel. Look forward to seeing you again. Thanks.